Welcome to another EduMed video and in this video we'll be summarising the changes that have happened to the advanced life support algorithm as produced by the Resus Council in the UK and this is in light of the new Covid pandemic. I think one of the benefits of um, this new algorithm is the emphasis on discussing Resus status with patients and their family early on in their disease process. It is certainly true that not every patient is appropriate for resuscitation and a clear and frank conversation with both the family and the patients are required to really make them aware of the significant deconditioning that occurs with prolonged intensive care stays after cardiac arrests and seeing whether patients are willing to have that quality of life that for some people is significantly reduced with the need for nursing homes and so on. So an early do not attempt CPR um, status should be um, ascertained if that is the case and if not the appropriate information should be given to patients so that they understand what it is that they potentially are um, signing up for if they have a cardiac arrest and are um, resuscitated with poor pre-morbid uh, status in terms of their cardiovascular, respiratory or even uh, neurological function. The most important thing about the changes in the COVID ALS guidelines is your personal protection. It comes number one. You must do nothing without having first donned on the appropriate level of personal protection. So if you see that a patient is um, not breathing properly or if they're unresponsive, you must call for the um, uh, for the resource team to come before you check for a rhythm and for signs of life. So the first thing you do is you put out a resource call before you do anything else. Then, before you even approach the patient, you must don on the appropriate level of personal protective equipment. And to assess a rhythm and, and to feel for a pulse, you must, at the very least, have level 2 PPE. So what is level 2 PPE? At its basics, it is a surgical face mask, a, f a protection for the eyes in the form of a visor or goggles, a full-length plastic waterproof apron which covers the arms, and a pair of gloves. This is the bare minimum that you need in order to go up to a patient feel their pulse and to apply the um, defibrillator pads to assess a rhythm. Do not skimp on this. I know that most healthcare providers initial reaction is to go to the patient. Fight that. You must protect yourself first. Once you've done to your PPE, you are going to assess the rhythm by feeling a pulse and placing the pads on the chest and assessing for a rhythm. During this time, the resuscitation team should be arriving. And for the resuscitation team, they need phase three PPE. What that is, is a fully formed face mask that is fit tested. And that is one that filters out viral particles that should be applied properly. Do not rush to put that on, put it on, mould it around your nose appropriately before you do anything. A face shield to protect your face from any splashes, a full gown which is waterproof and covers your arms, one or in some trusts they say two pairs of gloves, a hat to cover your hair and covers for your shoes or if you don't have covers at least having shoes that you can wipe down with antibacterial antiviral wipes after you've had your resuscitation. This is again the bare minimum. Do not go in if any one of those things are not on your person. You must protect yourself. During a resuscitation you will probably have to intubate a patient if Anyone in that room is intubating the patient. Every single person is exposed to aerosolization of the virus. 
there is a direct correlation between the viral load that you're exposed to and the severity of the disease. You must protect yourself at all times. Whilst you're donning on your PPE, the P two people, the one or two people who have gone in first, who are in the level two PPE with the surgical face mask, who fell for the pulse and putting on the pads, if they find that it is a shockable rhythm, they can shock the patient up to three times. The key difference with this, with ALS in COVID positive, suspected or confirmed patients is that you do not start CPR and the only people who will do CPR are those in full level three um, positive uh, personal protective equipment i.e with the proper viral filter mask face shield gloves hat and a full gown they can start CPR and normally what they do is chest compressions and depending upon the um, algorithm that your specific hospital has they may elect to put a f anesthetic face mask on the patient connected to a water circuit with oxygen flowing and not bag the patient to prevent aerosolization until everyone is clear and an early intubation of the patient using the most senior doctor present to do so. If the patient has a return of spontaneous circulation or doesn't actually get to the point of arrest, use the standard um, uh, post-arrest treatment, giving them oxygen, normalizing the CO2, getting a 12 EDCG, treating any precipitating causes that have caused a deterioration. And all of this should be done if in by people who are in phase three personal protective equipment. A few important points. Chest compressions are important. Again, I re-emphasize, chest compressions can only be done by those in level three personal protective equipment and anyone with level two um, personal protective equipment should leave the room before CPR is started. Oxygen should be given. That can be either given by a face mask, anesthetic face mask with um, gas going through a water circuit, minimize bagging of a patient and um, early securing of the airway with a cuffed endotracheal tube is important to prevent further aerosolization of the virus. Waveform capnography is really important as with any cardiac arrest because it can guide cardiac output and also um, give us an idea of whether the tube is in the correct position. The rest of the algorithm is very similar. Give amiodarone after three shocks um, adrenaline is given every three to five minutes with adrenaline given up front if a patient has pulseless electrical activity or asystole. The additional bits such as ultrasounding to echo the chest to see assess the cardiac status, um, thinking about early angiography and extracorporeal um, CPR with ECMO are all things to consider, but the basics are the same as with any other ALS. So what are the key differences? Obviously no mouth to mouth. Don't listen or put your head close to the mouth when looking for signs of life. The only sign of life you are looking for is with a pulse. Your safety comes first. Do not do anything without PPE. With level two PPE, the only things that you can do are feel a pulse and shock the patient. And CPR can only be done by those who are in level three PPE with the full viral face masks and um, the rest of the stuff. If you're doing CPR and you're not an experienced intubator, it is absolutely fine to use an anesthetic face mask with a water circuit with a viral filter on it and just hold it over the patient. Bagging the patient depends on your level of seniority and certainly intubating the patient with a cuffed endotracheal tube is the most useful thing to protect the airway but also to reduce the aerosolization of the virus further. 
Intubation should be done by the most experienced person simply because these are always relatively difficult intubations and in patients who have arrested from COVID, certainly ventilatory failure is an important point and so a misplaced endotracheal tube could be the difference between a successful and unsuccessful cardiac arrest. So the thing that I want you to really take away from this talk is your protection comes first. And that is the real emphasis that the Resus Council have put in. Do not do anything without the appropriate level of personal protective equipment being donned on. If the patient is very unstable, it does not matter. Your protection comes first. And we have certainly seen in other countries where people have not been fastidious with their personal protective equipment, they have then gone on to become unwell. And the higher the viral load that you're exposed to, the more likely you are to get very unwell. So look after yourselves. I hope this is a useful video. And if you have found it useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification. There's going to be lots of videos coming out over the next few months. And if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments section below.